Hi, I'm Craig Young. I'm the VP of Cybersecurity with Trend, and we're here for this brief uh, CISO session on XDR, the new frontiers for 2021 and what it's all about. Uh, I'm a former CISO, actually, for a federal government department, and that should almost disqualify me from uh, giving a talk on this subject. But uh, here we are. So uh, we're going to really talk about what XDR is and also some of the promises that have been in the past. This is, talk is subtitled, uh, We Were Promised Jetpacks and Correlation. A lot of promises over the years about all this data being brought together under one roof and being able to do all this magical correlation and collection. And uh, doggone it, the promises have not been lived up to in many cases. But uh, this is what XDR is about and what we're going to talk about today. The world of your SOC and other places you do security analysis today is a busy place. There's a lot of threads that people try to connect amongst themselves. Uh, and there's a lot of needs there today. They do a great work, but their job is unnecessarily hard. All the data is there, but it's not being collected well. So when we look at what the SOC team really wants, it's about uh, correlation across the entire environment, not just in silos they have to bridge together themselves. A lot of the problems are, you know, we know what the, a lot of the problems are today. So today the SOC gets siloed into endpoint looks only. Uh, if there's tools, some tools that provide better analysis than others, that's the ones they lean on, and then some places become a bit of a blind spot. Um, the uh, network events are in separate kind of metrics and the like, and it's generally just not really well stitched together. Worst part is many tools open, many consoles open, and humans become this sort of meat API that have to join them together. Um, then there's also some places that often haven't even been brought in. Email is one of them where it's been a real sort of, well, you deal with email security separately, don't you worry about that. But inevitably the SOC team or anybody trying to do threat, uh, threat tracking or threat hunting inevitably has to go in there as well. XDR is supposed to join all this together. It's supposed to be this linking of all this information uh, in sort of one place where you can not only do the one place of looking, but also utilize techniques like you know machine learning and in the future AI as well uh, to bring that all together into one place to do this. One of the great indicators we've had in the need for this is MITRE. MITRE has been a, uh, good in one way in that what it's done is it's really highlighted the how bad guys attack us and the steps they take. Whereas a lot of the prevention measures we've had, they've been really good at sort of spot it and stop it. What MITRE really highlighted is that there's a lot of steps that happen that aren't really obvious or that won't trigger a lot of alerts or will trigger alerts that don't have high confidence in them. And the paths that MITRE has shown us are, are those. The other lesson we take from MITRE is that a lot of the prevention measures have been ignored. So, for example, if you're going to test home security, you know, the tiger pit at the front door has to be closed during the testing so you can test the internal measures. Um, so that's one of sort of the, the, the weaknesses of MITRE in that perspective. But the big lesson we learned is that connecting all these dots together and then being able to prevent them at any point when the confidence gets high enough, that's the real value of what this sort of coordinated uh, approach should be. But hang on, we were also promised platforms along with our, uh, you know, uh, jetpacks and correlation. This was supposed to solve the problem over the last decade or so. If you buy a bunch of stuff from one vendor, they promised that through API integration, it was all going to work together and it was all going to, you know, provide some of these promises that I'm talking about now with XCR. Well, there are some real limitations in that. So we saw, for example, that no data persistence. You kind of made a request to the API, you get the information back, and it was a very kind of question answer, Q&A kind of approach. The other big issue is that it was the lowest API denominator. You couldn't just pull all the information you wanted. You, you were really limited to the, the API between the, the, the participating parties. Uh, the dumbest one, that's kind of the best answer you would get. So if one part of the infrastructure had was collecting some kind of data. Um, the other ones may not be doing that. So it, it never really worked out. Um, there were some advances there, but this kind of linkage wasn't there. Um, the biggest one, though, is that there was no data left. There wasn't a big pool of data you're doing the information on. It was you're queuing up, querying a product, and then you get an answer back on that on their data set. There was no kind of joining it together. And once you join, and you missed also the, the ability, if it, the data was joined together, to do further analysis on it. So that's where uh, like platforms didn't really work out for us. We've had a lot of things in the meanwhile, though, a lot of acronyms that have been uh, promising us great things. Um, you can ignore the blue ones. I just made those up for uh, just to try to uh, uh, highlight the problem we have. But when we look at things like, uh, you know, uh, EPP has been a big one, right? We've advanced the normal endpoint platform. It's gone to endpoint, you know, uh, uh, prevention. 
uh, EDR um, took it one step more and saying, do you know what? There's things that we want to collect, and this is heading on that XDR path. Um, we want to collect things that may ne not necessarily be a bad thing on their own, but they could be one of those breadcrumbs that we're going to follow later. And the MDR part, the managed detection and response, that's bringing the people in. Uh, so we've already got people like, you know, in your sock and doing that, but if you want to bring extra people into the threat hunting game, that's where MDR comes in to take this data. Uh, we've had SIM for a while, like security information and event management. That's been this sort of narrow view. We'll talk about that later. Uh, but XDR is kind of this, this pool of data in between, but also uh, doing detection and response. We look at an XDR kind of a diagram. Um, it's, it's, there's going to be pulling in information from a lot of different places, and there's really four key ones. Endpoints, networks, email, and cloud workloads. So if you look down at the bottom of the slide, those are the ones that are the, sort of the key elements that bring together. But unlike a platform or API type approach, where you just kind of have querying between them, maybe to a console that will do some kind of roll-up, the data from these sources can be pulled together to do new kinds of analysis and new kinds of... Uh, uh, sort of uh, queries put against that data to uh, find information that you may not have been even looking for months previous, or if there's been a persistent attack, there's been some probes going on, uh, being able to piece those together in new ways uh, is interesting. I think a big story of this is also that it includes email, which is, email is almost involved in every attack today. It's almost, uh, you know, the constant in every attack story that we hear, especially when there's, you know, the constant of phishing or targeted phishing or something going on to try to get by other safeguards. So bringing that into the fold is actually a really big part of this. But I want you to focus on the on the data lake, and that's the real difference between what we've seen with sort of previous approaches of, of API integration or just in the console or, um, you know, uh, or SIM alone. Um, doesn't prevent you from using SIM. SIM does not go away with XDR. Definitely not. It's one of the tools we use, especially for the quicker analysis. Um, and the people part doesn't go away. So MDR remains part of the story as well, that if you want to go to an MSSP, but more of an MDR kind of approach with, actually with XDR, it's even better. They have more things that they can apply that great expertise to, to tell a better story. They're not limited in what they're looking at. So you don't have to have all these pieces to have XDR. Um, you know, ideally two or two or more is, is ideal. Uh, one is great, in fact, uh, especially as you keep the data as you advance over time, as you can pull it into other sources as well. Um, endpoint, um, just in the discovery part is great. So this is taking EPP and EDR and um, pulling information uh, from it. A lot of the EDR information has only been addressable by the, you know, by the EDR console and the EDR teams. But bringing it to a larger analysis gets really interesting. What happened, um, you know, and also for a fact cleanup. Um, you know, who else was affected by this? Who else got that email? Uh, who else, uh, you know, had transmissions with, uh, with this party? So as we look throughout this story, we can see that, you know, endpoint, email, email uh, cloud workloads become an important part as well because that's typically where the data is. So once you compromise one part, you're going to go after, you know, the pot of gold, which is, um, you know, typically in the cloud, which is your cloud workloads. Often it's been ignored as well uh, with so much information now transient to the cloud. And if you have, for example, like cloud workload protection platforms, there are some kind of security in the cloud. Um, being able to pull information from that becomes really meaningful. Again, when multi-cloud is the reality, the consoles provided today by the cloud security providers, um, you know, they're not multi-cloud, and today they're not as advanced as some of the, uh, you know, the, the, the purpose-built security platforms for that. But then you take that up one notch more and you can link that together, that data uh, becomes even richer. Um, but no matter the quality of, of the safeguards that you deployed, I think that bringing this information together, um, you know, from these various sources, you know, it should be an additive uh, value. You know, the one plus one equals five in this case uh, should be should be a truism. Um, you know, networks always had the blind spots, especially with so much work at home going on right now. Um, you know, uh, endpoints as well uh, with so many different types of devices. Um, and there's so much mobility, people moving, uh, networks moving, cloud platforms moving around with all this mobility, uh, it really makes the SOC team's uh, job difficult. So providing that context and not having to stitch this together all the time manually. That's, that's definitely one of the goals. So with this correlated detection, what other things can we find? Well, again, there's so many low quality events that we find and it's just bombarding SOC analysts today and uh, it makes it really difficult. So instead, you know, help with that filtering. So yeah, other tools do that, but joining those, those low quality events into a bigger picture to provide a higher quality one 
uh, from these, these high rich sources and be able to take different kinds of looks from different angles at them uh, from, uh, you know, from, from the data lake over time, that becomes really valuable. But also being able to push out the response element. And this is what a lot of tools are missing today and that R in XDR is critical that uh, for this extended detection and response is uh, be able to take actions quickly, especially when it's a known bad or when your confidence level that you set, you, you, you turn that dial, then you can say, right, you know, let's take action. Um, and a lot of the action, unfortunately, today has been a lot of sort of network blocks only or endpoint, uh, you know, uh, holds only. Um, but why not do both? Why not do all of it? And email as well. Uh, opportunity as well for machine learning, of course, to provide, uh, uh, you know, uh, taking away from the people side uh, to having to do it. Um, correlated detection, again, as we talked about the promises that were made, um, you know, especially when we look at MITRE, which I mentioned earlier, um, you know, this should be mapped to your MITRE techniques or what your internal processes are as well. It's really hard. I see a lot of soft teams that struggle. They've got a really rich sort of internal way to threat hunt, and then a, they have to mesh it with tools that have a different way of looking at it. Maybe they're CVE based only. Maybe they've got other kinds of techniques they map to. But MITRE has really become the standard. So if you want to use that technique, uh, that should be a key sort of anchor across these. Uh, again, one anchor to link multiple threads across different points that should make the job simpler. Um, you can be able to set rules as well, not being limited to a single rule set. Um, again, if you're in an attack scenario, those may change. And if your infrastructure changes really quick, those may change as well. One merger and acquisition is all it takes to really change these structures, and it should be fairly seamless. Another real goal of XDR is to leverage your people. Um, you know, uh, if it's going to be, you know, we're short 1 billion security people, uh, that's, you know, whatever the number is, your people are valuable. Put them on valuable tasks and not have them doing sort of the grunt work. And this removing of the low quality events, trying to provide quality for them and take away some of the easy steps or the repetitive steps they find themselves doing all the time, uh, that should be a key goal as well. So question we often get asked in the world is, how is this different from SIM or EDR? Well, SIM itself um, has to talk to a lot of different things. And that's kind of what XDR is trying to do as well. But the challenge is with having to support so many different platforms out there today, it's a real limitation. And it's a fairly static look. It's good and quick, um, but the response element has often been limited in there as well. There's a lot more depth into this we go into at other sessions, but uh, this, uh, you know, this is a key takeaway is that XDR doesn't uh, necessarily replace SIM. It's different than SIM, but it does things much different. On the EDR side, when you're getting all this rich information that's coming from the endpoints, of course, a lot, a lot is getting lost in the SIM side, right? It's just not utilized. Yes, it's using EDR, but what about using that with the other platforms? So with all this great information that's coming from all these different sources, a lot of it's just getting left on the table as you kind of, uh, as you roll it back down together. Hopefully this is a really quick brief introduction for you to at least get your toe wet into the XDR data lake.